Hello to you and welcome to Adelante Chicago. I'm Lourdes Duarte. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bienvenidos. There's a new push to get more Latino men interested in education, and there's good reason for that. Listen to these numbers. Only 5% of Chicago public school teachers are Latino men, even though the district has a high number of Latino students. So joining us to talk a little bit more about the issue and why getting more male teachers is so important, Chalkbeat reporter Mila Kumpalova, uh, who actually put that story together. Thank you for coming in. Always nice to talk to you. Thank you for having me. Okay, this is so interesting uh, because I think it's an issue that's probably been going on for years and years, and the pandemic probably made it worse. Is that the case? Yes, that's right. Uh, we've known for a long time that there's a shortage mm -hmm. in both um, male, Latino, and black teachers. Um, and the pandemic really um, increased the sense of urgency around this issue because some of the both academic and mental health fallout that we saw mm -hmm. affected boys and young men of color disproportionately. Okay, so now the push is how do we get more male teachers in the field and how is that being done? I guess what can we do about it or what can the city do about it or on a state level, uh, how can we help? A lot of the efforts more recently have focused on this idea of planting the idea of going into careers in education early um, and working with um, boys and young men to uh, help them imagine themselves as teachers. Teaching or, yeah, because for so long principles. it's been sort of perceived as women get into the field, not so much men, and that needs to change and is starting to change, hopefully. That's right. Young men don't see a lot of guys who look like them yeah. uh, in their schools, either in classrooms or in the principal's office. So it's a bit of a leap to say, you know, this is something that I want to pursue and this is something that I can actually do. Okay, so you looked at the data and the numbers and studies. Uh, explain to me what we're seeing, because I mentioned what 5% of students uh, or of teachers at CPS are actually male Latinos, uh, but yet there's 90% of the students are students of color. So uh, how is it looking at your average school, right? Right, and so yes, that's that's all correct. It's also the case that about 25%, almost 25% of the students are Latino males in CPS. So we have 5% versus 25%, uh, which is actually a little better than what we see at the state level as an, uh, as an average, which is fewer than 2% of mm -hmm. teachers are Latino males. And I would imagine the studies indicate how that harms or how what that means for your average student, right? Not having somebody who one looks like them or one can understand some of the things that they're going through as young adults as children uh, what have you found in, in, the, in that research yes there have been some well-regarded studies just in recent years that really make a connection between exposure of students particularly black and Latino boys, but really all students to some extent, to male teachers of color and their likelihood of graduating and, and going That's on to college. So this has been actually documented and fairly well established that uh, those teachers do make a difference for students. So they make a ditch difference in making sure that students go on to college and graduate, uh, stay out of trouble. Any, any anecdotal stories that you can tell us about? Uh, maybe in some cases where the teacher has been able to make a difference for a Latino or a black student? Sure. Uh, for my reporting, um, I visited a uh, one of Chicago's high schools, Diet High School, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of three schools that this year is piloting a new program, a partnership between Chicago Public Schools and a nonprofit called Thrived, which administers former President Obama's My Brother's Keeper initiative here sure. in Chicago. Um, and so I met a student there who spoke with me about what a difference the two male black teachers uh, that he's had in his high school career. He's a senior now, uh, but he still thinks about um, how influential those uh, men yeah. were in his life as he was going through middle school. Okay, uh, and then what has been sort of the obstacle to getting more students, more male teachers in the field. I know we talk about this perception of, you know, that's a job for women. Perhaps that's not a field that men want to go into. But what other things are you hearing from the public as to why there's that lack of understanding sure. and interest in going into, into that field? 
I think that perception piece is definitely a big part of it. Um, what I've also heard is that uh, for black and Latino male students, uh, the pressure to contribute to family budgets and to become an earner as quickly as possible is very much there. Teaching careers often start with an unpaid uh, student teacher experience mm -hmm. and those starting salaries are modest as we know, so that can be um, a turn off. And then we really have also an issue with retention for young male teachers of color going into this field. And that has a lot to do with this expectations that, that they will come in and be all things to all black or Latino boys yeah. um, at a school, including disciplinarians. Yeah, it's so interesting, that dynamic. You write about it in your recent article. You're writing about all sorts of education issues in Chalkbeat, which if you're interested in reading some of her work and so many other wonderful writers and journalists that put together those pieces, you can go to chalkbeat.org and you'll find it there. Thank you so much, Mila. Thank you for having right, me. We'll My talk pleasure. again.